If you only use Google Search Console to submit URLs to try and get them indexed in Google, then you're using it wrong. And if you're not even doing that, then you're missing out on a whole world of data that you can have at your fingertips about your website. Hey there affiliate schoolers and welcome to this video in which I'm going to be showing you exactly how you should be using Google Search Console. I'll also show you how to get it set up and we're going to be working fast and furious so you might want to use that pause button, make some notes and then come back to it later. Let's dig in. So the very first thing that you're going to want to do is to make sure that you've got Google Search Console set up in the first place. The easiest way to do this is just to Google Google Search Console and click on the top result and then click on this button here that says start now if you already have a Google Search Console account it's going to open that up if not it's going to walk you through a series of steps that you need to follow you will need to click on add property and then choose whether you want to add the domain or just a specific URL and it doesn't really matter which one you choose if you're going with the URL prefix just make sure that you are choosing the exact match to the domain that you're using so you should be using HTTPS and it's whether you're using the www dot version of the website or the non www dot version. For the purposes of this video, I'll use the affiliate school as I've not set this up yet in Google Search Console. Hit continue. And then we get the verification of an ownership page. My preferred method is to add a HTML tag to the head section of the website. So we can just copy that and if I take us into the back end of the Affiliate School website and then you just need to find the section within your site where it allows you to add code to the header. Now I'm using Divi which means I need to go to this integration section here and it says add code to the head of your blog and I'm just going to add that. Hit save, come back over and hit verify. And there you go, the ownership is verified straight away and we can go to the property. And that's it, you're all set up and good to go. So we're gonna go back over to the Coffee Grind Guru Search Console just because that has data in it already that I can show you for this tutorial. So the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to link your Search Console to your Google Analytics. So you should already have Google Analytics set up. If not, to get it set up, what we're going to do in here is we're going to go into Admin and we're going to go into property settings under the property tab. And you will need admin access in order to do this. And then you're going to click adjust search console and we're going to click add and that will bring up our search console and any properties that we've got in search console will appear here. So we're going to select coffee grind guru and we're going to link that to the coffee grind guru Google analytics. And we can see that what this does is it allows Google search console data to be shown in Google analytics and vice versa. So you're just getting more robust data in both places. Next up, we're going to submit our sitemap and I can't overstate how important this step is, particularly with all the indexing issues that we're facing with Google at the moment. This is the best and easiest way in order to make your website as crawlable and as findable for Google as possible. So make sure you don't skip this step. And this is really is quite a simple step to take. So the first thing you're going to need to do is identify where your sitemap is. Quite often it will be your domain name followed by sitemap.xml. And you can see that's actually taken me to it. It's redirected it to the sitemap underscore index XML. However, if you can't find it, or if you think you haven't got one, usually if you're using Yoast or all-in-one SEO or rank math, plugins, then they are going to generate a sitemap for you. There are dedicated sitemap plugins, but if you're using one of these, then it's easy enough just to use those. So we're using Rank Math on here. So we can see here, we go into Rank Math, Sitemap Settings, and it actually shows us right at the top here where this is. Yoast does a very similar thing. So we're just gonna take that and click into it as well and just check that it is there, which we know that it is. So we can take that URL, and we're gonna head over to Search Console, into Sitemaps, and we would just paste that into there and submit. Now we can actually see here that because I bought this site, there, there are a couple of sitemaps in here that were actually submitted in 2018, and I don't really need three sitemaps. 
It's probably not going to destroy your site, but if you've got a massive site, then having multiple sitemaps is not a great idea. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to remove these two because this page sitemap and this category, particularly the category sitemap, I don't want my categories to be crawled at all. So I'm just going to click these three dots up at the top and remove the sitemap. And I'll do the same with this one. And then later on, I'll find those sitemaps and I'll try and make sure that they are actually removed from the site because we don't need them there. So the best thing that you can do at this stage is just to have a little play around with Google Search Console. You've got the basics set up, so you want to have a look at some of the various areas and we're gonna do that now. So one of the biggest topics at the moment is indexing and this coverage section is going to give you all the information you need on what you have indexed. Just be aware that this does not update every single day, but it does update every two to three days. So you can see the last update here. So if you see something that's indexed in Google and it's not showing on here yet, don't panic, that's the reason why. What we can do is we can click into valid and this will show us all the pages that are indexed within Google under the submitted and indexed section here. And if we click into here, we can actually see all of them and we can expand the rows per page and we can see we've got all these pages indexed and we can see when they were last crawled, which again is useful information just so we know whether these pages are getting crawled. If we're making updates, it's useful to know that. But if we go back to the coverage page, it's probably going to be this excluded section that's the most interesting to us. And actually the Coffee Grind Guru one has a lot of different types. And the one that's causing the biggest issue for everyone at the moment is this discovered currently not indexed. This is where pages are being found but for some reason at the moment, Google is taking an absolute age to index them. I do have a video on a bit of a fix on that. I'll link that in the description below. So you can take a look at that after this video if this is a problem for you. But this is a great way of just identifying which pages do have this issue. We can actually see over the last few months, this has actually reduced over time. So it looks like, and I haven't used any technique on this website, I haven't used the technique that's in that video. So this is something that is naturally fixing itself over time with this site. And because of that, I won't for, try and force index any pages on this site. But I can see I've got these three pages at the moment, and these are fairly new pages on the site. And this is, and this is actually quite interesting because one is a buyer's guide, one is an info page and one is a review page. But what this is really more useful for is seeing any other issues that you might have. Now, excluded by no index tag, this is worth taking a look at and seeing if you've accidentally no indexed a page. But typically these are going to be pages that we have submitted as no index and we can do that using a plugin such as Yoast or Rank Math. Pages with redirects. Now we can see there are a lot of redirected pages here. Now that is because when I took on the site, I redirected a lot of the URLs to new URLs. This is a good thing because we want to see the new pages indexed and the old pages not indexed and just obviously redirecting. And most of these are fine. The ones that you're probably going to want to take action on are these 404 errors. And if you've got these duplicate ones here. So if I go into this not found 404, we can actually see that there are four pages coming up here that were last crawled fairly recently, maybe not that one, uh, well, to be honest, really only this one. So if we, if we click into this, what it's going to do is it's going to tell us where that URL is linked from. And this is really useful because we, if we have got genuine 404 errors, then we can fix them. And we can see here that the offending link is coming from this page here. So again, that's something that we're going to want to go into and either send that link to the appropriate place or remove that link altogether. One of the most irritating things about Google Analytics is that it doesn't give you much keyword information in terms of where your traffic is coming from, what the users are typing in to get there. Google Search Console gives you a lot of this data. So let's take a look at how we can find that. So under the performance tab here, we can click into search results. So typically it shows this data over the last three months and it shows us our, our web data. If, you, if you're particularly interested in image, video or news rankings, then obviously you can change that over to that. 
but this is typically what you're going to want to see. Now, I like to see this over a longer time period. You can do comparisons too. So if we want to do the last three months compared to the previous three months, we can do that and we can see the increases or the decreases. Now, this is probably one of the most interesting stats here where we can look at our average position because this is really giving us an idea as to how our rankings are improving over time. So on average, the previous three months was 27.3 and our last three months is 17.6. So we've moved up considerably across the majority of our keywords or at least on average. However, we can see at the same time here that the average click-through rate is pretty poor at 1.1%. Previous to that, it still wasn't great at 1.5%, but it was, it was better. So from this, I might look at this and say, I probably need to do some work on my meta titles and meta descriptions. So this is a really good way of just comparing traffic at a glance. This is where we get all of this information, all of the, the keyword information, and we can see where the majority of our clicks are coming from. Now we can do this by query and by page. So this is really useful if you've got an affiliate website or any kind of website, to be honest, you can see which are your best performing pages. And we can see here very easily that in the last three months, the Spin Coffee Maker page has been the best performing page. And this was a new page that was added I think around about August time. And then we can see, you know, again, which our best performing pages are and which ones we might want to focus on if, you know, they're converting or not converting. So we can do, we can spend some time working on those pages. We also get keyword volume data, which is really useful because we're actually getting this direct from Google. And quite often we're relying on third party tools to get this information. To see, so to get this from Google themselves, is really valuable data. And again, it can help us to understand which keywords to focus on and which pages to focus on a little bit more. Another section that is really useful in Google Search Console is this links section here. So what this is going to do, it's going to give you your external links, your internal links, and sites that and your and the top sites that are linking to you. Now you might be using a tool like Ahrefs or SEMrush to track your links, but they're just tools that are trying to scrape the majority of your links. Whereas Google, these are the links that Google has actually seen, they've actually crawled, and they know are linking directly to your site. We can also see the top anchor text as well. So this is the anchor text of the links that are coming into your site from external. So let's take a look at these top linking sites and click into more. There are 649 that have been picked up here. So let's have a look at this one. This is one that I don't actually recognize at all. So let's, let's go in and take a look at this. And we can see that we've got three pages coming in from these. And there you go. The site doesn't even exist anymore by the looks of it. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't give you that much data because it doesn't tell you exactly where the link, exactly which page the link is coming from, but it, it is useful to know and you can go in and do a bit more research and a bit more digging around into these. And I think, I think as well, it's really useful to see the internal links and what you're linking out to from your various pages. And just so you know, if there might be a page that has a, a higher, a much higher number than any others. And that might just be a bit of a, a cause to, to take a little bit more of a look at why that is. Next up is the core web vitals and the page experience sections under the experience tab here. And this is really important to understand how your website stacks up against Core Web Vitals and page experience in general. And we want to get this as close to 100% good URLs as possible. So you can see there's a lot of work to be done here on this Coffee Grind Guru website. We're interested in these, again, these failing URLs in the Core Web Vitals and any mobile usability issues that we might have. Now, this top section is on mobile and this bottom section is on desktop. And we can see there are issues on both. If we were to focus on one over the other, then I would say definitely focus on your mobile over your desktop because for one, you're probably gonna have more traffic coming in there. But for two, Google tends to use the mobile experience first and mobile indexing first over desktop. So the page experience gives us a good overview 
and we can click into these and get more information or we can just go directly into Core Web Vitals and we can see that on mobile we've got eight, it's, in fact it's the same on both, 18 good URLs and 39 that need improvement, none that are poor. So if we go in and open the report, we want to look at these that need improvement. And we can see here the issue with these pages is LCP, which is largest contentful paint. And if we click into one of these, it will actually give us the examples. We can click into this one and let's just take a look and we can go directly into page speed insights. But we can see the reason is that it's taking three seconds. And Google is pretty good. If you just hover over the, the, the question marks, it's gonna you know, describe exactly what the issue is. And then you can go into page speed insights and troubleshoot that a little bit more. Now that's outside the scope of this video. That is something that I will be covering. So make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want to be notified of that when that video comes out. Next up is everybody's favorite. It's the URL inspection tool. So let's take a look at that. So this is pretty simple and straightforward. And actually it appears on pretty much every page within Google Search Console that we can just add it directly up here or we can click on the URL inspection and it will just take us to that. And essentially what we'll do, and I'll use this one here that's in the top, is we can add a URL and you can just paste in the URL to see if it's on Google and we can see here that this URL is actually on Google and this was one that I added last week actually I think it was less than seven days ago and this one has been indexed because we can see here it's indexed although it does say that it's not submitted in the sitemap but it should be if this said URL is the URL is not on Google and it's because it hasn't been discovered yet, then you can click this button here, request indexing. And in the past, that worked really well. And you could hit that button and depending on your website, you would be indexed within anything from a couple of minutes to a day or two. Unfortunately, that's not the case anymore. And particularly with new sites, the best thing to do is to allow your pages to index naturally. If you wanna give it a push, you can use that tool, but don't just keep resubmitting. There's no benefit to doing that. Just do it once and then let Google index it when it's ready to index. What this is actually more useful for is finding out if there are particular issues around why a page won't index. So if you have accidentally put a no index tag on there, it's gonna tell you that and you can then troubleshoot it from there. Now the next one that I really like is, uh, t is, the, is the temporary removals tool, which is here. So we click into removals under index. And what we can do here is we can add pages that we want Google to temporarily remove from the search results. Now, the reason that I like this tool so much and what I tend to use it for 99% of the time is to identify pages that are cannibalizing each other. So in other words, if we've got more than one page that is competing for the same keyword, and I think that that is a potential issue, then what I will do is the weaker page of the two, I will add as a temporary removal from the index, and then we can see how that impacts on the search result. Now, if the search result for the other page then shoots up, then what we can do is decide what we want to do with the offending page that we have temporarily removed. Now this will go back into the search results, so we'll need to do something with it. Typically, I would either 301 redirect it, or change the content on the page itself, or in some circumstances, I would even remove the page altogether and maybe add some of the content that's on that page to the page that we want to rank. Next up is the security and manual action section, and hopefully you won't have to visit this too often. A manual action is where your site has been manually looked at by Google and a penalty potentially applied. Now, if that is the case, you would have been notified via email and you will get that notification in here. At that point, you would then need to take some action and you can request and re request an appeal for the manual action to be removed. Now within security issues, again, if there are any kind of issues regarding security with your site, they're going to be in there. So it's useful to know that that section exists and what it's for. Now next up, let's take a look at the settings page here. Now there's a few things that we can do here. We can add users. So if you've got someone, if you're selling the site and you want to add someone as a user to take a look at, at the data, then you can give them read-only access. You can add other users and give them admin access, but obviously do that with your own due diligence. 
you can see the associations that we've got and there's that Google Analytics one that we set up. And probably the most useful one here is the crawling stats. So if we open up the crawling stats here, we can see how often the website is being crawled. And we can see over time that with this site, there are more crawl requests happening on a daily basis than there was in the past, and that's a good sign. If we start to see this decline, then we might have some issues around our crawl budget. The other thing that you want to see here is that your average response time is as low as possible. Now this is, this is fine, 391 milliseconds. The, fast, the, the easiest way to get Google to crawl more pages on your website is to reduce this average response time as much as possible. And the way in which you do that is by having your site speed as fast as you possibly can. So that is Google Search Console in a nutshell. Hopefully that was useful for you and you found one or two nuggets in there that you didn't already know about. The best thing to do is just to get in there, play around with it, have a look at your data, get to grips with it, and then go from there. I'd love to hear in the comments below of your experiences with Search Console. So please go ahead and leave them. And if you still have this horrible, horrible, horrible Google indexing issue and you really, you really need a fix, then watch this video next because I do have one, but just make sure you read the comments underneath to make sure you know what you're getting yourself in for. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video and good luck with your projects.